all right guys welcome back to another G auto repair YouTube video and today we're working in this 2016 Ford Transit Connect the complaint is it drains the battery overnight now we've already did some testing and whatnot so I'm kind of just doing a video on how to test for parasitic drain spoiler alert it does not have one I'm gonna go ahead and let you know right now but I was inspired to do this video I've done a couple other videos about uh, parasitic drain this is just to give you a quick rundown on how to do the test if you are struggling with this situation so this had a bad battery um, the battery was put probably not even or almost a year ago but I guess the battery failed and that's why it was going dead the customer swore up and down that it has to have a parasitic drain because it drains overnight he's got to charge it uh, jump started in the morning so whatever the point is that it, it was a bad battery so to do a parasitic drain normally a symptom of a parasitic drain is that it does consume the battery overnight however before you go ahead and conclude you have a parasitic drain you need to test the battery the battery has to be in good working order before you conclude that you have a parasitic drain so we got a fresh brand new battery in here and I'm just gonna go down the, the, the ideas of how to check with your meter you're gonna need a meter to tell if you do in fact have a parasitic drain so to begin with the first thing you want to do is make sure all the doors are closed everything is and the key is out of the ignition very important make sure the key the key fob whatever is out of the vehicle and away from the vehicle and everything is closed now granted when you are going to be looking for a parasitic drain you're gonna have to be going into fuse boxes checking for lights and things of that nature what can you do in that instance well you can open the door however you gotta trick the car to thinking that the door is closed so you do that by simply closing the door jam just like that and voila the car thinks that the door is closed when in fact it is wide open you're gonna have to do that because you need to get into fuse boxes you're gonna have to get it be getting in and out of the car looking for those drains or those draws um, so you're gonna want to do that probably all the way around because you don't know what you're gonna run into and uh, I'm gonna explain here shortly why that's important because on modern vehicles they have a bunch of modules and when you touch something you open a door or something you're gonna wake up modules and it's gonna give you an erroneous reading okay this car in particular okay so um, we're gonna go ahead and get started with that real quick um, the first thing you want to do is obviously you know make sure everything is closed and whatnot but we have to break the circuit and we have to introduce and in a, a meter in series this is not the only way you could do this if you have an amp clamp you can also do that so if you're handy with an amp clamp and you have one you can easily put it you know on one of these the, either the negative or the positive really doesn't matter and you can uh, read um, amperage that way that's gonna be the less intrusive and easiest way however I'm not going to use that. Most people don't have an amp clamp, so I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way and do it with the meter in series. Make sure your settings are correct. See, you may have multiple. Make sure you're in the meet in the amperage reading. Make sure you're on the right one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the circuit on the negative, which is back here, is bolted here. Let me shine the light and the reason I'm gonna do that is because this battery is deep in there if you have a battery a car with a battery right here easy to get to you don't have to do that you just take the the, the post out and then do it right then and there so um, you're gonna have to play by ear on this part but I'm gonna take this off right there so technically this battery is disconnected I'm gonna put this stud back in there okay I'm gonna put the stud back in there just because I'm gonna have to clip onto that okay 
that'll give me somewhere to clip onto. So here's the negative, it's disconnected, complete. So we're gonna turn on our meter to the amp reading. We're gonna go here and here. You might see a little spark. Actually, let's, I ha I'm, I'm, I'm having a negative reading. It's okay, but if that bothers you that much, just swap it around. There, now you're working with a positive number. Okay. So, as you can see here, we're drawing 1.5 amps. Technically, that is a bad thing. However, remember what I said earlier. There's modules that are awake, okay? So, when there are modules that there are awake, it's going to be drawing amperage. Each, each uh, module can easily draw uh, 100 to 350 milliamps. I forget what it is off the top of my head, but... Um, that's what it can draw so as you can see it went down to 0 0.0398 it's a little bouncing up and down you see that how it, it how it uh, jumped up to 0.455 that is a module that just woke up okay so we're going to observe this and see what the dealio is now let me just make sure that everything is off. Okay. The key is out. Yes, the key is out. All right. So what we're going to do is pretend like we open the door. Look at that. We're drawing 5.3 amps. That's because all these lights came on. Because remember, the car thinks, or we opened a door. So, there we have lights on everywhere. So, that's the draw right there. The instrument cluster is on. So, I'm going to close the door. sure that's closed or I can just slam it because I'm really not gonna look for anything I'm just showing you guys what to look at so I close the door it immediately dropped to 2.3 okay so we're gonna observe that for a little bit now I will go ahead and say and you're gonna have to read the manual because every year make model is different but you may see a parasitic drain for up to 30 to 45 minutes after you close the door or trick the car into thinking it's closed. That is totally normal. The module stay away for a certain period of time afterwards and it could be easily up to 30 to 45 minutes. Totally normal. So if you're looking and you're seeing that this stays high, it's okay. Don't freak out just yet. Give it at least 30 to 45 minutes. So 30 to 45 minutes, if you're still having that, then you can start, you know, suspecting you have a parasitic drain. So we're going to observe this for a few minutes, see what happens. We're going to do a final walkthrough, make sure everything's off. I don't have no little lights or anything on. I do not. I'm not going to open any more doors. This is the only one I'm going to do that. And I did that just for demonstration purposes. All the lights are off here, up here, here, okay. Everything is off. So, so far so good. Yet, we're still draining or drawing 1.4 amps. Remember, this is bad. It should be no more, and I probably should have said that <laughs> earlier, should be no more than 50 milliamps. That is 0 0.050 should be no more than that uh, 50 milliamps so we're gonna give it at least 30 to 45 minutes okay obviously I'm not gonna sit here and record all that because you're gonna be bored to death um, and then we're gonna come back 
in that time. So stay tuned. All right, guys, quick update. Uh, Toby. <laughs> uh, quick update. After a few minutes, it went down to about half a amp, which is obviously still high. And uh, now it is 0.321, still way too high. That is a problem. However, it hasn't been 30 minutes yet. So I just wanted to do a quick update to give you an expectation of what to, what to, what to see. So again, these are modern cars really older cars that don't have all those modules and all that fancy schmancy stuff different ball game it should pretty be instantly that you know everything shuts off but with new cars this is becoming the norm modules will stay up so again no more than 50 milliamps is the spec or the general rule of thumb it may be different on your car but generally speaking that's going to be the norm that's for sure on this car this is a ford uh transit connect so 50, no more than 50 milliamps so we're gonna give it some more time and then uh, wait till that gets down to zero stay tuned alrighty then so it has been more than 30 minutes because um, I was on the phone and whatnot <clears throat> so a little over 30 minutes but roughly at the 30 minute mark we have this as a result let me turn on the light here uh, hopefully you guys can see that well but we are drawing point 0304 pretty much mi uh, amps so we're drawing about 40 milliamps roughly that is well within the specs that is good that's what you should be seeing okay 0 0.04 it, it bounces up a little bit that's normal that's okay but roughly just to give you an idea about 40 milliamps 0 0.040 Sometimes it goes up to 0 0.50, but that is okay. Like I said, that is the spec. Um, if it was over that, and depending on how high above that, it very well can drain the battery overnight. The higher this number, the faster it will drain the battery. So if you're, if you're drawing 100 milliamps, 200, 300, uh, 500 milliamps, which is half an amp, then yeah that will drain it overnight with no doubt so uh, I had a, a previous experience on a similar um, on a similar transit connect and uh, I don't I have the videos up so if you want to go and look at that feel free to do so but that was a genuine actual parasitic draw and it was drawing over an amp and it was doing that all night so yeah within a few hours uh, it will drain the battery you would come the next day and the battery was dead that, that, that'll definitely do it and that ended up being a shorted uh, spiral cable it was a shorted spiral cable that kept waking up sending some kind of signal to the instrument cluster and the instrument cluster which is over here you got your gauges here the instrument cluster it will send a signal from here to here and this guy will wake up all those modules every module that that car had it will wake it up so that's why it was drawing so much power it was over an amp I don't remember the, ex the exact uh, specs but feel free to go and see that video if you wish to do so it's a, a lengthy video I'm gonna go ahead and warn you but and there's two parts to it that w that turned out to be a nightmare but I figured it out we got it fixed they haven't had an issue yet so now once you see this and you say okay we're good don't be quick to say okay good observe it for an extra you know 20 or 30 minutes because what the other one was doing was it would it would get down to zero and then within a minute or so when the module will wake up then it'll start bouncing up so it was going up and down 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 so just kind of observe and make sure there's not something that's kind of waking up and uh and uh increasing the draw so just observe it for a little while if it's been you know 20 30 minutes and it's still the same then you're pretty i would say you're pretty much to go do not do not you know uh, remove from the possibility some kind of intermittent intermittent problem that could come and go 
that's what happened to me with that one that's why I'm talking from experience uh, that one fixed itself during my first part of the video it fixed itself and it came back nine months later it came back with a problem that's how crazy these things get sometimes so if you accidentally hit a button or open a door or something you're gonna start again the 30 minutes so let's just push a button here on the steering wheel let's see what happens boom see 1.2 1.2 uh, amps see so just the simple fact of touching a button on the steering wheel even though the car is off it's enough to wake up modules and start draining your battery see now I went down to 0.01 and now I went back to regular but see that's enough to to give you an issue so make sure you don't press anything you don't open the doors or anything like that you should already have these open I will I can't stress that enough make sure you're ready to check for the problem now this is not gonna be an in-depth video on how to do it but you know to check the to see what is actually drawing you could use several methods uh, infrared uh, or I should say uh, thermal imaging to see you know if you got a hot fuse or something that's a, a tell sign that that circuit is draining you start pulling fuses until this starts going down you know I'm not gonna go through all that in this video I just wanted to teach you how to set it up and what to look for so I hope you found this video uh, educational and uh, if you enjoyed it please like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video ciao